You don't age because time passes. You age because your fast twitch fibers stop firing. And that's not an exaggeration. Your ability to stand quickly, catch yourself when you trip, climb stairs, or even react to something like something falling out of your hand, that's all fast twitch. And here's the part that no one tells you. Fast twitch fibers don't just disappear because you get older. They disappear because you stop using them. And when you lose them, you don't just get slower, you get weaker. You become more insulin resistant. Your metabolism slows down. Your risk of falls, fractures, and frailty goes up. Let's break this down. What are fast twitch fibers? Your muscles are made of different types of fibers, okay? So let's keep it simple. Type one muscle fibers, slow twitch they're called. Think endurance. These are great for long walks, easy jogs, cycling. They're fatigue resistant, but not very powerful. Type two fibers called fast twitch. These are the ones we're talking about. Now, here's where most people get it wrong. People hear fast twitch and think, well, sprinter. You know, that's just part of the story. You're not just born with a set amount of fast twitch and slow twitch. These fibers adapt to you as you train or how you don't train. Inside your fast twitch category, there are two main subtypes. Type 2A fibers, the hybrids, they're strong, but they also have endurance. They can use both aerobic and anaerobic, and you can train them to be more powerful and more fatigue resistant. Then there's the type 2X fibers. These are the true power fibers. They're the most explosive, the fastest to fatigue, and the first to go when you stop challenging your muscles. And here's the part that everybody wants to hear. Type 2 fibers are the first to decline with age. You don't lose them because of time. You lose them because of disuse. Every year you're inactive, you send a message to your body, I don't need power anymore, and your body listens. It adapts by reducing fast twitch fibers, especially type 2X. It literally replaces them with slower, weaker fibers, or worse, with fat and connective tissue. That's how aging starts to accelerate. It's not just wrinkles and gray hair. It's about fading your explosive capacity. Here's a metaphor. Imagine your muscles are a fire department and your type one fibers are your steady engine and crew. They keep the station running, they handle all the daily jobs, they never really tire. Then the type two A fibers, they're more versatile responders. They can handle a little bit of emergencies, but they can also handle longer shifts. Then there's the type two X fibers. They're the SWAT team. They only show up when their alarms are blaring, when there's high urgency, when there's high intensity, short duration, max impact. But what if you never call them? What if you never call the SWAT team? What happens when the station starts to forget about them and eventually the SWAT team, well, they're just disbanded. That's what happens when you don't lift heavy, when you don't sprint, when you don't move fast, when you don't jump. You lose the responders that save you when it matters most. So, okay. People are thinking, well, I'm not an athlete. Why does it matter for me? Because type two fibers aren't just about being an athlete. They're deeply connected to your health span. Type two fibers store more glycogen, stored carbs, and are highly insulin sensitive. That's the part that most people don't get. So when you lose them, you lose one of the body's best ways to clear glucose from the bloodstream. They have fewer, but highly active mitochondria. That means you need to keep them activated to preserve your metabolic flexibility, your ability to jump between carbs and fat. They generate the most force. So when they shrink, your ability to move with strength and stability, they shrink as well. This is why people who lose muscle, not just weight, but muscle as they age, become more prone to type two diabetes. They become more prone to metabolic syndrome. They become more prone to falls and broken bones, especially after the age of 60. And cognitive decline? Absolutely. Strength is correlated with brain aging. So all of these things are tied together. How about a loss of independence? Of course, that's really what we're talking about. That's one of the main factors. So after the age of 30, you can lose up to three to 5% of your muscle mass per decade or faster. But the fast twitch fibers go first. And if you become inactive after 40, you could lose up to 30% of your fast twitch fibers by the time you're 70, unless you're doing something about it. Here's a real life example. A client of mine, Alan, he's 61 years old, walks daily, eats clean, doesn't drink, sleeps okay. And yet every year he's noticing, I'm getting slower. It's harder for me to physically get off the couch each and every day. I'm struggling to lift a suitcase last week when I was at the airport to put it in the overhead bin. My blood sugar, my doctor told me, is creeping up even though I haven't changed what I eat or how I work out. And he thinks, must be aging. 
but here's what's happening beneath the surface, because it's not aging. Alan hasn't lifted anything heavier than a grocery bag in 15 years, so that stimulus has never attracted any of his type 2A or X fibers. He's never sprinted, jumped, or moved explosively in that time, losing fast twitch. His fast twitch fibers have shrunk dramatically, and they're having a significant impact on his stability and his strength. His muscle mass is down, his insulin sensitivity, therefore, is down, and his metabolic rate is down. Alan is a textbook case of functional aging, not because of disease, but because of disuse. And it absolutely positively was preventable. It's actually not complicated. You don't need to become a sprinter. You just need to send a signal. Remember the muscle fire department. If you never call the SWAT team, they will get laid off. You won't use them anymore. But if you send even an occasional high alert, hey, stay active, they will remain with you. And that's how you send a signal. Heavy resistance training, three to six reps. Think deadlifts, squats, presses at 80% of your one rep max. This activates type 2X fibers because they're the only ones strong enough to move heavy loads. Explosive lifts or power movements like jump squats, kettle swings, push presses. That speed and force demand recruits fast twitch units and tells you my body to please keep them. Sprints or hill sprints, not just jogging, bike, rower, or whatever you want to do, but max effort sprints for 10 to 30 seconds. These call on your most powerful fibers. Even three sets once a week can be enough to let them know we still need you. Do not lose them. Eccentric overload. Lowering heavy weights slowly forces fast twitch fiber recruitment. They act as the brakes, so they need to be strong to prevent injury. But again, you activate and tell them, we need you. Your training doesn't have to be long. It has to be intense, at least occasionally. And that's the part that we're missing. Just doing weights or doing cardio won't keep the muscle fiber, fiber actives alive. You need specific stimuli that challenge your nervous system, load your muscles, and recruit those fast twitch units. Even one day a week can make a difference. You don't age because you slow down. You slow down because your fast twitch fibers stop firing. Stay strong, stay sharp, keep moving fast, because sometimes life demands you jump, not step, and you need the muscle fibers that still know how to do it. If something in this video just clicked, something you've struggled to put words into, that's the power of perspective. Subscribe, hit the bell, and let's keep making sense of it together.